All right, so today we're going to be talking about various types of knots. We're going to start with the overhand, move on to the figure eight. We're going to do a clove hitch. We're also going to do a munter, and we're also going to mule the munter and then finish off with a double fisherman's. So let's start with the overhand. Now, the, all these knots, well, most of them will be on a bite, meaning I just take a bite of rope like this. Now, for the overhand, what I'm going to do is going to take the biter rope, I'm going to drop it down next to the other strands and make one twist like so and bring it through the back. All right, simple stuff. And also to dress your knot, make sure that you're pulling each strand nice and tight, and that's the overhand. Simple stuff. So next we're gonna do the figure eight. So same start as the overhand, I'm gonna take a bite of rope, drop it next to the other strand, as you can see. Now I'm gonna take both, I'm gonna twist once, twist twice, bring it through the back. And that's the eight right there, as we can see. Now, a thing to notice about this knot right now is this is what's called a dirty knot. It hasn't showered recently, from what I understand. Now, with dirty knots, you want to make sure they're clean. So to clean a knot, you can follow two strands. So you can start at the top or the bottom. In this case, we'll start at the top. And we're going to make sure, just see how they're, they're oriented. So I'm going to start from the top, two, OK. Not twisted, not twisted, going around the back, not twisted. It looks like it gets twisted right here. It looks like this strand wants to be on the outside. So let's just adjust that, put that on the outside, like so, and then retighten again, tightening each individual strand, as we can see. And that's the figure eight, properly dressed. We're going to move on to the clove hitch now. The clove hitch and the munter are fairly similar, it's just the finish is different. So we have a length of rope here. I'm going to make one loop and a second loop. Now what I want you to notice is when I made the first loop, the strand here was in my hand, it's on the outside. And the second loop, the strand is on the inside, right? So they're, op they're opposing, as you can see, opposing strands. If you make it the same way and then do what you think, then nothing's gonna happen, right? But if you're gonna make opposing strands like so, then you put them behind each other or you want the rope here to be crossing, as you see, you want the rope to be crossing. You don't wanna just do this. You wanna actually put it behind. So once it's behind, then it becomes a clove hitch. As we can see here, this is a clove hitch, okay? Now if you do it the other way and you put the strand here, this strand goes in front, this strand would then go behind, and you would still then have to put it basically in front uh, because if you put it behind, it wouldn't cross. You wanna cross and now you have a clove, okay? Now for the munter hitch, same length of rope here. I'm going to take this, take that, opposing sides, and I'm going to close the book. Opposing sides, close the book. As we can see, that is a munter hitch. Okay, so now we're going to do the double fisherman. So I'm going to take two strands. This is a cordlet here. This is great if you're making an anchor using your prussic or your cordlet. So I'm going to take the one in my left hand. I'm going to hold it. Now I'm going to hold it so the end is basically going down. The end of the strand is going down. Take the opposing strand, I'm gonna wrap it over my thumb, back, make a cross over my thumb. As you can see, I'm crossing it. And then I'm pulling my thumb out, putting it through. Okay, that's one side. Grab the opposing strand. And you see the slack end is pointing down. Grab the other strand now. I'm gonna put my finger over it, go over my thumb, cross the thumb, pull out the thumb, and now pull. And you can bring both together. And that's the double fisherman's. So the thing to consider is these end strands, you should have at least a fist for the end strand. So the, both these strands are a little short, um, but for demonstration purposes, I wanted to make sure they're a little shorter so you can see them. But if you're tying it, make sure you have at least a fist for the end strand. And that's the double fisherman's knot. Okay, so now we're gonna do the munter and muling the munter. As we talked about before, simple way to make the munter. One, two, as we can see, close the book on the carabiner, lock the carabiner, and this is how the munter's working, as we can see, right? So the munter's working well. Okay, now let's say, for example, the ice climber's getting tired, right? So maybe you're belaying the ice climber up, he's getting very tired, um, you know, he takes a little bit of slack maybe, 
Now, you're holding the brake strand, as you can see here. And if we just get an observation of this, what it looks like, I'm holding the brake strand. Now, I need to mule the munter. So basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the brake strand with my opposing hand. So if the brake strand's on this side, I'm going to take it with my right. Now, I'm going to bring the brake strand across both, making a loop across both. And now, the thing that's important is when I'm crossing both, I'm basically going to have um, this brake strand and also the working strand within the mule is what you want. Okay, so I'm gonna cross both and then bring it through the loop here, through this loop, as you can see. Okay, now I'm gonna keep holding it because as I let go, the client's weight is gonna cinch this mule. Right, as you can see now. So the mule is getting tight. And of course, I'm using my foot so it would be much tighter if there was a person's weight on it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pull out some slack because you wanna make now an overhand finish around both strands. That's our, going to be our finish and overhand finish. So we're just going to wrap it around as we can see and then just do a simple overhand finish right here. Right, and there we go. And now the last step I would do is I'll grab a carabiner. This of course can be a little bit longer but you can grab a carabiner and put it into this focal point or you can put it into the shelf somewhere. Um, this just makes it a little bit more secure to secure this somewhere as well. Uh, but that's how a mule the munter. Okay, now last thing we're going to talk about is muling the carabiner. So in that case, I'm going to do this for a rescue where I'm down with the client. We're doing a six to one drop loop and I want to make sure the client's not going to slip any further into the crevasse. Have a carabiner on the client. Like so, I'm going to close this carabiner on the client and I have this now, which I don't want. I want it to stop. So basically, again, I'm going to take my opposing hand. I'm going to bring it across. So basically, once again, it's across both. You see, I'm bringing it across both. I'm going to put it through like so and then let it drop on itself. And now the client's weight is tightening that up there. And that's basically what I would be doing. And before this happens, I would definitely try to also get some slack. You want to make sure you have Maybe about a meter of slack, potentially a little bit less. And this allows you, when you're climbing up, if you happen to pull the mule a little bit, then it's not going to undo the mule. You'll just be pulling the slack. And how this operates is, as you go to the top, you're pulling the strand, and like so during a rescue. And then that pops, and this happens. And then you can use this system to haul up the client, as you see. So that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.